Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List. And on today's show, I show you around one of the most surprising football tours that you can visit in this country. No, seriously. Wolverhampton Wanderers, more commonly referred to as just Wolves, they're one of the original members of the Football League and one of the oldest professional teams in world football. Currently flying high in the Premier League, it's a team steeped in history and tradition, and they've been playing here at Molyneux Stadium longer than most teams have existed. Built in 1889, with a current capacity of 32,050, don't let that small capacity fool you. This stadium is massive, and a tour of the place comes highly recommended. So when you get here, I highly recommend that you park up early and have a walk around the stadium. You'll probably come across this place first, the north side of the stadium known as the Stan Cullis Stand. Named after their greatest manager, Stan Cullis, you can find a statue of him outside, and this is home to the Wolves Museum and the Wolves Megastore, which we'll go into later. It's also home to Wolfie's Den, which I assume is some kind of kids play area, and you'll also find the ticket office on the northwest side of the stadium. A season ticket waiting list for this place? Wow. The west side of the stadium is known as the Billy Wright Stand, named after one of their greatest ever players, Mr. Billy Wright. And the main reception is located in the middle of the Billy Wright Stand. And it's here that you'll first notice how well branded this place is. From the logos everywhere, to the W's hidden in roofs, even the door handles resemble the logo, which is awesome. They've even branded the public subway, i.e. the tunnel that goes underneath the roads. And you can learn a little bit of history about Wolverhampton Wanderers if you don't know it. That's pretty awesome. Speaking of subway, this leads to the Sir Jack Haywood stand. You'll know you're there because there's a big giant statue of the man himself literally outside. Admittedly, the stand from the outside isn't much to write home about, but you still get to see this lovely branding everywhere, especially the wolves' heads in the brickwork here. From the outside, the worst looking stand is possibly the Steve Bull stand. I'm sure it's very lovely inside, and this is where the executive boxes are, but from the outside, it kind of looks like an old council building that hasn't changed since the 70s. You'll probably also notice the memorial wall where people have their names engraved on bricks and the TV crews lining up outside to set up for tomorrow's match. Anyway, to start your tour, you'll need to go to the main reception located in the Billy Wright stand. It's advisable to check in early because if you do, you can have a wander around and have a look at some of the memorabilia that's out on display. And there's some really interesting pieces here. By the way, this is where your tour actually begins. Your tour guide will give you a short history of Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club. It's mainly for people like me who don't know a damn thing about Wolves, but it's nice to hear even if you're a Wolves fan. You'll then get led upstairs and look at that branding, isn't it wonderful? You'll then get to go into the chairman suite and once again, everything is branded beautifully and the layout, well, it's actually quite nice. It's definitely a very fancy shindig. I'd love to be here on a match day, taking in a nice meal and some drinks before the actual match begins. Even though I'm Chinese, unfortunately I don't know these guys, so I won't be visiting this place anytime soon. They've even got these nice fluffy blankets to keep them warm on those freezing cold nights. And they're beautifully branded as well. You'll step out into the director's box, where you'll arguably get the best seats in the house. And from here you'll notice that the stadium is actually quite big. Okay, none of the stands are actually symmetrical with each other, nor do they look the same, but I think that adds to the character. Currently, there's teams of people preparing the pitch for tomorrow's game. And I should probably mention at this point that Wolverhampton Wanderers are one of the few stadiums in the country that allows safe standing. So most of the Sir Jack Haywood stand over here is now fitted with rail seats. You get a short talk about things like stadium facts, capacity, history, etc. It's a good place to take photos and videos, but you don't actually get to stay here all that long. 
you're then led into a typical corporate hospitality suite. And whilst this might look big and swanky, this is nothing compared to what's next. It's down the stairs you go, past some more beautifully branded walls, before you come to the Sir Jack Hayward suite. And what a suite this is! It's so big that they can actually divide this into two and form two suites with it. It's definitely the finest suite here in the stadium, and I wouldn't say no to corporate hospitality here. You'll then walk down some corridors with some historic memorabilia on the walls. You'll go past Billy's boot room, which unfortunately has some kind of conference going on in there, before you get led into the press conference area. And once again, it's immediately obvious that the branding is pretty much A1. Look at that branding right there. So this is where all the press conferences happen. It's a decent opportunity for photos and videos right up here on the table. You get a short talk as to what goes on here on a typical match day. And for those of you fans who are struggling to get reception in the stadium, here's the Wi-Fi password. You'll then get to visit the TV studio. This is where Sky Sports and BT Sports will broadcast from on a typical match day. On TV, the room looks massive, but in reality, the room is tiny, and it's pretty bare bones. You can actually see the rigging in the ceiling where they hang the lights and microphones, so it's actually an eye-opener. It's actually a lot smaller than what you think. But even though it's small, you still get a nice view of the stadium, and you can still see all the men hard at work preparing for tomorrow's game. You then get led downstairs, back into the reception area. You get a short historical talk as to some of the things that's in the reception, including the FA Cups that they've won, and believe it or not, the Queen's actually been here. Huh, that's surprising. I wonder if she's actually a Wolves fan. But next up is the players area, where you'll get to see some of the press conference bits where they get quizzed after and before games. This mural saying this is Molyneux, which is kind of cool. And you'll get to go into the away team's dressing room, which, even though it's a little plain, it's still not bad. It's still nicer than some of the changing rooms that I've actually been to, so overall, really not bad. But then you'll get led into the home team's changing room, and at this point, something's amiss. The tour guide keeps us waiting out there for a few minutes while he's trying to argue with the kit man to let us come in. The kit man finally relinquishes, but he tells us under absolutely no circumstances that we can take photos and videos. Which is odd given that this is a stadium tour and the changing room is one of the main draws. So if they had things like team sheets and tactics out, then yeah, I can understand why they wouldn't let you take photos and videos. But from as far as I can see, uh, nothing. They're really just setting up for a football match. I took some slide video anyway, but unfortunately I don't get to show you all that much. But it is a very nice changing room, and it would have been nice to take pictures with various shirts, etc. But hey ho, unfortunately, that's your lot. But now it's time for a tunnel walk. I say tunnel loosely, it's basically a big giant door that leads onto the field. So, not really a tunnel. But the view from out here is pretty sweet. You can still see everyone working very hard to get this place into match shape. But now's a good opportunity to take photos of yourself with the pitch, or sit in the dugout seats, and generally just enjoy the view from the pitch side. The tour guide keeps the information short and sweet, mainly because it's hotter than the freaking sun here, so we end up walking around the stadium. You'll even get to see stuff that most other stadium tours hide, like big giant piles of crap, the photographer's room, and we even have a look at some of the concourses. Way bigger than at Old Trafford. After another short history lesson outside, you then get led into the Wolves Museum. Now technically, you can do the museum all on its own if you want to, but why would you? The tour itself was actually very good, and the museum actually comes included with the tour, so you're better off doing them both at the same time. And the museum itself is actually quite modern. In fact, I'm actually shocked as to how good it actually is. If you take your time, you can walk around the exhibits and learn a lot about Wolverhampton Wanderers, what they've won, some of the more priceless artifacts in their collection, like this World Cup winner's medal, Connor Cody's 300th game match-worn shirt, the evolution of the Wolverhampton Wanderers kits, because they used to wear this colour and look like this, 
and overall, it's actually quite educational. I honestly didn't know this about their current owners, but it looks like they've got their head screwed on, they're willing to spend the money, and they're willing to invest in the club. Which is a shame because most other owners don't do that. You can wander around this place at your leisure, but once you're all done, go through the exits where you'll go down a flight of stairs, past this picture of Sir Jack Haywood, where predictably you'll end up in the club shop. And once again, it's a very nice club shop. It's got a lot of stuff that you can buy. I probably won't be buying this shirt at this price anytime soon. But yeah, if you're a Wolves fan, this is definitely a nice place to shop. It's got pretty much everything that you're after. Okay guys, so I've just completed the tour here at Molyneux Stadium. And I gotta say, I'm shocked. It was actually pretty damn good. Not only was the tour guide very, very personable, but you actually got to see quite a lot of stuff. As mentioned many times in this video before, I love the branding. As a graphic designer, I love anything to do with branding, and the fact that they've branded it to holy hell is extra brownie points in my book. So then, where does this rank on the hierarchy of your stadium tours? Well, I'm actually going to be very generous and mark it quite high. The reason why I've marked it high is just for the overall experience. You get to see a lot of stuff, the tour guide was really good, and the museum was an added bonus, so definitely, definitely worth checking out. If you are a fan of Wolverhampton Wanderers, or if you're a fan of English football, and you're here in the Wolverhampton area, this definitely comes highly recommended. Definitely add this to your bucket list. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to the Molyneux Stadium. Fortunately for you guys, it's easy to find, is located about a three minute walk away from Wolverhampton city centre and the easiest way to get here is to drive yourself. You can park for free at the Stankulis car park which is opposite the big giant Asda so you really can't miss this place. Alternatively if you want to use public transport I'll leave the public transport details right there on the screen and if you're a local it's easy to find because you can just walk here. The cost to do the tour? It's about £20 which seems quite expensive compared to the other tours that we've done around this area. But for that, you get a very detailed guided tour, took about two hours I think, and you also get access to the museum afterwards, so it's definitely worth the money. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, because Molyneux Stadium is actually quite big, you'll be walking around a lot. If you can't walk up and down the stairs for some reason, or if you have trouble walking or mobility issues, ask the tour guide to use the lifts instead of climbing up and down the stairs. Also, the entrance to the stadium tours isn't at the stand colours end where you park. It's actually on the west side of the stadium, the Billy Wright side, and you'll need to go into reception to check in. Ideally, you'll need to check in about 5-10 to 10 minutes before the actual start time. And apart from not being able to film in the home team's dressing room for some reason, can't imagine what that reason would be, you got to see pretty much everything that you would want to see out of a stadium tour. So it definitely comes recommended, and if you are at all interested, add this to your bucket list. If you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on that comment section below, and if you've got any other bucket list ideas you know what to do. If I get enough suggestions, I'll go ahead and do that. But guys, thanks very much for watching. From here at Molyneux Stadium, we'll see you in the next episode. You got to see a lot of stuff, you got to. And if you are here at this. And if you. The entrance to the stadium tours isn't at the front, isn't at the stand.